Hello, this is Chris with ChrisStock.com. Welcome back to our DNA 9 video series. In this video, I'm gonna give you a 10 minute or less overview of DNA 9 coming from the perspective of someone who's never looked at or utilized the DNN content management system. If you've already utilized DNN in previous versions, you can probably skip through this video and check out the next video in our series. First thing we're gonna do in this video is log into our DNN website and I'll show you the persona bar. The persona bar becomes available to content editors and admins of our DNN site. That gives you access to manage things like pages and the content and the security and the file system within our CMS. We'll talk specifically about how you manage content in DNN through the use of pages and modules. And we'll talk about how you control the look and feel of those pages and modules through the use of themes, skins, and containers. We'll also talk real briefly about the security within DNN. DNN allows you to restrict access to pages, controlling who can view them, and even who can edit them. So let's go ahead and switch on over there to our virtual machine where we have DNN running and I'm going to load up my DNN site by opening up the Microsoft Edge browser and I'm going to navigate to our DNN 9 site that I installed in a previous video. So I'm going to type in the URL dnndev.me. Now here we have our plain DNN 9 install which we completed earlier and I'm going to go ahead and log into that install with the host or the super user account. This was the account that I created during that installation process. When I go ahead and log in with that account, I can see in the top right corner a couple things change. We now, instead of having a register link, show super user account. That's the first name and the last name of this particular account. And then we have a logout link option. On the left side of the page, we have what's known as the persona bar. The persona bar is actually new in DNN 9. It replaces what was known as the control panel. The persona bar gives us access to a content menu here, which allows us to navigate to a page management section and a recycle bin. Underneath the content area, we have a manage icon. This allows us to get in to manage things like users and roles, security within DNN site assets or global assets, the notion of managing files, images, documents, etc., that you might upload into your CMS. Now, global assets are a higher level of files and, and documents. Within DNN, it is a platform that supports the ability to run multiple websites out of one installation. Each of those sites, sometimes referred to as a portal, can have their own collection of assets, or they can pull from the global assets. We can control themes from the manage option. We can also get into the site management and the logs or the admin logs. We'll talk about each of those sections in future videos in our DNN 9 series. After the manage option, we have a number of settings available to us here. We can navigate into the site settings, the ability to change the name of this website, even the ability to change the URL. We can get into some of the security settings, the search engine optimization functionality within DNN, vocabularies, tags, categories. We can also manage extensions, the ability to add additional modules and content within our DNN platform. We can manage servers, the scheduled process, custom CSS, we can access our database through the tools within DNN and manage some of the configuration options. So that's a really quick intro to some of the features that the persona bar gives you, but more specifically, if you wanna edit the content within your DNN website, the persona bar gives you a little pencil icon down here in the bottom left. This will allow us to go into edit mode. Now, before we talk about getting into edit mode, let's take a quick step back and talk about pages and modules within DNN. Within .NET Nuke, the notion of creating a page is provided for you here within the CMS. We can go into the content persona bar option and navigate to a, a link here called pages. This gives us a list of all of the pages on our website. Now, currently we have a home page. We also have a page called activity feed, search results, and a 404 error page. Now, you can't actually navigate to these 
options within the menu in our DNN site because right now the home page, the one called home, is specifically the only one that's visible in the menu. If we were to close this little window that's opened up here, we can see that menu option over here. The gray box tells us this is our menu and we're on that page in the menu. So if we switch back over here to the pages option, from here we can either start to edit pages, which we'll talk about in a future video. We can add multiple pages at the same time, or we can just add an individual page. And again, we'll get into all the page management functionality, creation of pages and the page settings in future videos in our series. Within a page in DNN, we can then start to apply content to that page. Content is applied through the use of a module. A module provides functionality within the CMS. There are literally thousands of modules available for the DNN platform, and you can very easily build your own. Definitely check out some of the later videos in our series as we talk about how to build custom modules. But a module is essentially a little plug and play container that you can drop into a page and start to manage content. You might have a module for photo galleries or a module for a slideshow or a module for a video player. The most commonly used module in DNN across most websites is gonna be the HTML module. It's an interface that provides you a rich text editor that allows you to put some HTML content into a page. We'll take a, look, a brief look at that HTML module here in just a moment. In order to access the module on a page, what we need to do is in that persona bar, we need to go, need to go down to that bottom left-hand corner and click the pencil icon. Within the pencil icon, once we click on that, it's gonna reload the page for us. And what we start to see here are a couple of icons that are now visible to us on the page. These icons are known as module actions. And there's a couple of different actions available to us. Up in the top left corner of one of these modules, when I move my mouse over the module, I have a pencil. This allows me to start to do what's known as an inline edit. I can click on that pencil and start changing the content within this blue area here immediately. Or if I happen to choose the pencil over on the right and click on the edit content option, this will take me into a rich text editor within the HTML module. So a rich text editor provides you a, a WYSIWYG interface. What you see is what you get. Kind of a word icon type of interface. But the WYSIWYG interface here allows us to get in, start editing content for editors who might not be familiar with HTML, but they know they wanna make changes such as turning a word bold or underlined or creating hyperlinks. The WYSIWYG editor gives us those tools. Now from here, we can save that content. In my case, I'm just gonna click cancel for now. And that'll go back if I had saved it, it would update the content on that particular module on the page. We can also navigate into settings for the module and we can navigate into an area here that allows us to start to move content on a page. So where modules can be placed into different sections of the page and those sections are controlled with the theme or the skin. A skin or a theme provides a layout for a page. Layout within the page can then be controlled through the use of panes. Panes are locations where modules can be provided. Now within this particular home page that you get with a DNN 9 install, there are two modules on the page. If we mouse over, we can see two different sets of icons. But if we scroll down further on the page, we start to see some dotted lines and boxes here. Those are different panes in which we can start to place other modules and other content. We'll talk more about that in future videos, but the flexibility of the theming engine within DNN allows us to create a very flexible system and controllable system in terms of where we can place our modules and our content through these panes. Now we can also within DNN wrap these modules or wrap this content in wrappers, a, a container, might have a border, might have a background. There are a number of different options available to us. We'll talk more about themes and containers in future videos in our series. Also within the platform, we can add additional modules to the page. So at the bottom portion of this page now, we have three icons. Once we switched into edit mode, this gray bar appeared. From here, we can click on add, and we can start to add 
a new module to this page. So we might choose this HTML module. If we click on that option, it then gives us a drag and drop option that we can go ahead and choose where we want this module to go. So if we go ahead and scroll down a bit, we can see we can take that module and drop it into any one of these panes. And as soon as we do that, we can start to populate the content for that module by going into that action menu and choosing edit content. We can also copy an existing module from an existing page using the second option here with the E next to it. And then we can get into the page settings if we want to get in and start controlling the settings for this page. We're not going to actually manage the settings on this page, but I do want to navigate in there and talk to you really briefly about permissions. When I went to the page settings option, I clicked on the permissions tab. This gives us a permissions grid here. This gives us the ability to start to control who can view this page using this view tab column or who can edit the page using the edit tab column. Within DNN, you might hear pages referred to as tabs. This is one of those places where they are. But within the permissions, we can then start to control who can access the page, who can view it, or who can edit it. We do that through the use of what are known as security roles. We'll talk more about security roles in future videos in the series, but there are three roles that we can see listed here currently. There's an administrator's role. There is a, a role or a notion called all users. And then there is a registered user's role. In simplistic terms, if I wanted to make my homepage only visible to people who were logged into my website, I could uncheck the view option for the all users section, and I could check the view option for the registered users role. This, if I hit save, would make my page no longer visible to the general public. If they tried to hit that particular page, it would take them to a login page. As soon as they logged in, assuming they had an account, they could then view the page. We're not gonna make that change here on this page just yet. We'll talk about security and permissions in additional videos in the platform. Let's go ahead and navigate back over here to our website as we wrap up this video. If we had made any changes, and I did, I put one module on the page, but I have not put any content into it. After we're done with that, we can go ahead and click on close. That will close our edit interface. You notice most of those dotted lines all disappear. We still have two modules with content being displayed on the page, but that new module that I added down in the bottom middle is no longer visible. That's because we hadn't populated any content yet. So it looks like we've gone over our time frame of 10 minutes here just briefly, but there's a lot of content to cover with an introduction to DNN. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you are familiar with DNN and looking for what's new in DNN 9, be sure to check out the next video in our DNN 9 series. This is Chris Hammond with ChrisStock.com. Appreciate you watching the video.